Well, welcome today to Arise Church Online. So glad you're here with us. I'm Pastor Evan, pastor here at Arise Church. You know, before we get started, can I ask you a huge favor? Number one, remember to send in your prayer request. We, we want to pray with you. We have people that are standing by to pray for your requests. Our, our prayer team, we want to believe for the miracle that you're believing for in your life. And if you could do us another huge favor, if you're on Facebook, click the share link. Also, on YouTube and Facebook, if you just click the follow button, we'd love to have you uh, just be a part of what God is doing at Arise to be alerted and in tune when anything new comes up. If you can do that, that's great. Well, we're in week four of our marriage series simply entitled, I Said I Do, Now What Do I Do? We've been looking at marriage, how we can improve our relationships, and I'll tell you, if there's any time that we needed to work on our relationships, it's today. It's today. We, we need better relationships. So the message today, before I tell you the title, okay, don't tune me out. Don't tune me out. It's called The Porn Delusion. All right, so hang on. Hang on. This isn't just going to be a message, porn is bad. No, no, trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. And I'm telling you, whether you're single or married, this, this is going to, this can change your life if you can grasp what I'm trying to talk about here today. So don't tune me out. Stick with me to the end in Jesus' name, all right? Stick with me on this. So we live in this world today where porn is easily accessible. And you might have kids, you say, I don't, I don't want my kids to hear this. Well, can I tell you, even as a, a parent myself, porn is easily accessible to our kids. Kids have free and really unfettered and a lot of unsupervised access to the internet nowadays. And parents, we got to do what we can to be vigilant on this. But even the best that you can do, really, if your kids are determined to, to see something, they're probably going to see something. Again, it's, it's, it's just accessible. You don't have to put a disguise on. You don't have to go sneak out at, in the middle of the night and go to a store anymore. You can have, you can have access in the palm of your hand. Your, the computer that you carry in your hand can give you access uh, in, in this world that we're in today. The world's largest free porn site reported, they've been started reporting their stats every year. This is going to blow you away. In 2017, they had 28.5 billion visits to their site. Remember, this is just, just one site, 28.5 billion visits. In 2018, that number increased to 33.5 billion visits. It's a huge number. Remember, the world only has, they estimate, 7.8 billion people, all right? 33.5 billion visits in 2018. 2019, the number increased to 42 billion visits. And one can only imagine what that number would be in 2020 when people were stuck at home during the COVID crisis. People were quarantined. People couldn't do anything else. I, I wonder what the number would be. The bottom line, it's a growing industry. It's a growing industry. And this just ain't adults. From kids to adults, this is a real, what I would call, problem. A real problem. It's incredible how many statistics and studies have been done on the effects of pornography. And these aren't by Christian ministries, all right? We're talking secular studies because people are recognizing it's a problem. Uh, in, a, in a study called Till Porn Do Us Part, there was an examination of pornography use and divorce. Was there a correlation? They surveyed 2,120 married adults, and they found that overall, the chance of divorce doubled for both men and women who started using porn after getting married. Across the whole sample, the divorce rate was 6%, for non-porn users, and it was 11% for porn users. Even those who reported being happiest about getting married, when they began porn use, it was associated with higher divorce rate, 12% versus 3% for those who didn't start using it. And I would say it's no coincidence <clears throat> that this year we've seen a 38% increase in divorce. No coincidence. Being stuck at home. Problems coming to light. Increased use of pornography. There's been an increase. Grant Brenner, in an article that he wrote, cited a study in 2018, personal pornography viewing and sexual satisfaction. 1,500 young adults were surveyed, and they concluded 
that frequent porn viewing was associated with lower sexual satisfaction. Even viewing once a month with lower, uh, lower satisfaction would begin to show up. And you know, throughout the entire study, not once was pornography associated with greater satisfaction. Not once. Not once. You know, if porn, this is what he went on to say, is taken as a how-to manual, it's going to do a bad job, to say the least. Bad job. You're looking to experience a fantasy in your reality. It's going to do a bad job. It'll warp your reality. It'll give you a false expectation, and ultimately, it will leave you unsatisfied. It'll leave you unsatisfied. They've also found that it increases loneliness. Loneliness. He goes on to say in his article, they said pornography use is a two-phase process of arousal and euphoria during sexual stimulation, followed by relief and comfort after completion. Pornography provides temporary relief, but ultimately induces greater feelings of loneliness and isolation, disrupting normal attachment behavior, leading to greater difficulty in forming stable, satisfying relationships, and further increasing the likelihood of using pornography as a substitute for intimacy with others. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. They find when you're lonely, it drives you to find the fix. And once you get the fix, it makes you feel more lonely which drives you back into that. And it's a destructive cycle that goes around and around in people's life. Now, what, what is this all linked to? Well, it's, let me teach you a word if you've never heard this word before. It's dopamine. Dopamine. You say, what's, what's dopamine? Well, we all have it, all right? We all have it in our brain. Dopamine, it's a neurotransmitter that's responsible for controlling the brain's reward and pleasure centers. It's dopamine, when things make you happy. Right? If you love ice cream, you see ice cream, what is dopamine's release? Ah, you're happy, right? Hamburger, happy. Commonly, it was used, especially before, to describe the use of drugs, strong drugs, cocaine, heroin, meth, that when people would use those strong drugs, it would release dopamine. It would release pleasure in their brain. But now it's known that it's not just these chemical things or drugs that release dopamine, but even behaviors that can release dopamine. Things that we do, for example, gambling and pornography. It, it gives people a rush, and that's why it becomes addictive. You get the rush, you feel pleasure in your brain, and now you want that pleasure again. In the human body, there are two things, two of the things that would release dopamine that would be common things would be eating and sex, eating and sex, doing those things releases dopamine. It gives people pleasure. But you know what they found is that when a human would watch porn, it would actually raise the dopamine level 200%, 200%, a super strong reaction. In 1954, scientists actually took rats, and what they did is they stimulated the dopamine centers of those rats' brain. And they did it so much, so much, that the rats couldn't enjoy anything else. All they wanted was that. You know, the rats even stopped eating. They stopped eating. It didn't give them pleasure anymore. And those rats actually starved to death. They starved to death because they wanted the stimulation that the scientists were giving rather than what food. And that's why you look at a drug addict, how they would neglect themselves. They would neglect themselves in pursuit of a drug, in pursuit of the dopamine, in pursuit of what we call the high. There's only one thing that they're after. They're after that high. Increased levels of dopamine leads, when it's always happening, leads to attention deficits, depression, uh, lack of motivation, low libido, social anxiety, and insomnia. And porn is an easy way for humans. It's an easy way for us to feel good for a moment. For a moment. Remember, the Bible talks about sin as a passing pleasure. You can feel good for a moment. And when you can feel good for a moment, when you know you can do something to receive an immediate response of feeling good, why work on anything else? Why work on your marriage? 
if you can have it the easy way? Why, why work on making things better with your spouse if you can just go somewhere else and get the fix, fix and feel good? But the problem is this, is that increased levels of dopamine begin to affect the plasticity of your brain. Now you say, what is it, plas plasticity? Is, is there plastic in my brain? No, that's not what it, it is. The word plasticity means it's the brain's ability to change and adapt as a result of experience. You know, pornography releases huge levels of dopamine, which then begins to change our brains. They've done brain scans. They've seen the difference in brains. You know it. People that do drugs and all these things, their brains start looking different. The plasticity has been changed, and that's what pornography does. It begins to change the makeup of your brain, the way that you think, the way that you process, the way that you view things. Researcher Rachel Ann Barr, she wrote this, instead of turning to a romantic partner for sexual gratification or fulfillment, habituated porn users instinctively reach for their phones and laptops when desire comes calling. Furthermore, unnaturally strong explosions of reward and pleasure evoke unnaturally strong degrees of habituation in the brain. Psychiatrist Norman Doidge explains, pornography satisfies every one of the prerequisites for neuroplastic change. When pornographers boast that they are pushing the envelope by introducing new, harder themes, what they don't say is that they must they have to because their customers are building up a tolerance to the content. Our brains are changing. Remember, stick with me. Don't tune out. I'm going somewhere with this. You know, conventional sex is decreasingly uninteresting to users and being replaced with themes of incest and violence. And like a drug, just like a drug, after a while, one hit doesn't do it. You need two hits, three hits. Or if I could say it this way, you need something stronger. You, you need something that's going to push the envelope more, something that's going to excite you, move you, get you going. And that's why pornography is so dangerous because what you start at sooner or later isn't going to do it anymore and it can lead you down a very dangerous road as your brain becomes acclimated to it. Depression, sexual dysfunctions, anxiety, lower quality of life, Loneliness, poor mental health, insomnia, it's all linked to the use of porn. And then people get into this trap where they need more of it even if they don't like it. Even if they don't like it, they need more of it. And it's somewhat paradoxical than a, than an, a, that adult entertainment may revert our brain wiring to a more juvenile state, that it changes that. And the much greater irony is this, is that while porn promises to satisfy and provide sexual gratification, it delivers the opposite. Those are the researcher's words, not mine. It promises one thing, it delivers the opposite. So you say, okay, all right, all right, Evan, I get it, it's bad. What's the point? Where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? Well, I'm glad you stuck with me to this point because we're going somewhere. God has placed a desire for intimacy in every single one of us, in every person. He's placed that desire. Genesis 2.18 says, the, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. At the time, it was just Adam. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. But I believe God would say the same. It's not good for a woman to be alone. It's not good for people to be alone. So whether you're married or single, maybe you're not married, that's okay, listen up. Whether you're married or single, I think we can agree that life is better together. Life is better when we do things with other people, when we have real, authentic relationships, whether it's your husband or wife or your friends, your friends. Not everyone's gonna get married. Not, not everyone desires to get married, and that's okay, but I believe that everyone desires to have at least a few good friendships because life is better. We have a desire for intimacy. We don't want to live life alone. 
And why I, call it, why I call it the porn delusion is simply this, because the porn delusion is that porn promises you something that only a real relationship can give you, intimacy. It promises you intimacy, but it's a delusion. You're never going to find real intimacy. You may meet a need for the moment, but it's never going to satisfy and take the place of real, authentic relationships. And you see, because I'm not just talking about physical intimacy, but spiritual and relational intimacy. We need that. We need real relationships. And in our series today, as we look at married couples, we need intimacy between husbands and wives if you want your marriage to work. When conflict enters into a relationship, being intimate is the last thing you want. Whether you're married or your friends, conflict enters. You don't want intimacy. What do you want to do? You want to separate. You want to get away from each other. You want to push that person who hurt your feelings as far away from you as you can. And there are married couples who are unable to reconcile their differences for whatever reason it is. And they can't reconcile. So what they do is they begin to push one another away. If the enemy can separate you, he can weaken you. And he wants to separate you. And porn is an effective weapon that the devil has used to isolate people, whether it's in a marriage or even in a friendship. Effective weapon that he's used. And it's isolated. And it's given people a way out of not having to deal with their problems and saying, I will get my fix here. It's a delusion. In Genesis 1.11, God said this, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that's what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, trees, seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. And look at this. And God said it was good. He said it was good. God created things. They, they were seed bearing. In other words, there was more of it on the inside. It all had, everything he created had the potential to reproduce. There was more in it. And you know, our marriages, your marriage today, there's more on the inside. There's more on the inside. I've, I mean, I'd probably be hard-pressed to meet someone who said, oh, our marriage is the best. It is at its full potential. I think most people would say, no, there's, there's more. There's more on the inside. There's more we can do. There's more that God has put in there that we can develop and we can grow and we can get better at. He went on to say in Genesis 127, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and and multiply. His first command, to be fruitful and to increase, to grow, to get stronger, to get better. In our relationships, we need to grow. We need to get stronger. We need to get closer. We need to get better. Our relationships can get better. But you see, it's going to be up to us. That's our call. Be fruitful and multiply for our life. It's our call, but it's up to us. That's, that's why we come to church or, or you tune in online. Why? Because you believe there's more potential in your life. You know that you, you haven't got there, that you can grow, that you can continue to be fruitful. You get into small groups. Why? Because you can grow. If you didn't find a group yet, go to our website, get into a small group. You need to get into a group. Grow. There's more that you can do. But why, why do we get stuck? Why do we get stuck in our marriages and in, in our relationships? Why do we get stuck? Why, some of you watching right now, you're stuck. You're like, my marriage isn't going anywhere. It isn't fruitful. It isn't multiplying. And again, I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about having kids. I'm talking about having a, a blessed, growing, healthy, thriving marriage relationship. And you're saying, why? Why isn't it happening? Well, it's because you've lost intimacy. You lost intimacy because the way that God designed for multiplication and growth to take place 
It, he designed it to take place through intimacy. And that's why we need these relationships. Whether, again, you're married or even outside of marriage, men with men, women with men, women, building relationships that are intimate, that you can be honest and open about. You know, when, when you're in those kind of relationships, it begins to bring growth. You see, intimacy needs to take place in order for things to multiply. You want your marriage to thrive. Intimacy needs to take place. There is seed and there is potential in your marriage relationship, but increase will never happen unless intimacy is a part of the equation. And what happens in so many marriages is that porn takes the place of intimacy. You see, porn gives you a sexual encounter without any, you needing anyone else. It's an illusion of intimacy, but in reality, it keeps your relationship sterile. It puts your relationship on hold. You see, you'll never reach the full potential in your marriage without intimacy between one another. And I want to, I want to outside of marriage too, when you're in your relationships and your friendships, because I know there's some people watching, you're not going to get remarried. That's okay. You need intimacy in your relationships where you can open up. We're not, we're not talking about just being physical, but spiritually, to, to open up, to receive that intimacy. You see, Matthew 18, 19, you know what Jesus said? I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. When you get together with others, guess what? He says, I'll be there. He, he's designed, he, he wants us to be in relationship with people. It's really even in design, in nature, when, when you look, when you look at nature, there's a saying out there that says, opposites attract. You know, I think so many people, you're, you're married and, and you loved, you loved that they were different than you when you first met and now you despise it. You loved how different they were. Opposites attract. But what you love now, you despise. It drives you crazy. And instead of being on the same page, all you do now, you, you war and you, you fight and you argue and you're constantly upset at each other, looking at your differences, looking at what you can't stand. But look what, look what Jesus said. We're, we're two or three are gathered, I'm there. You know, in your relationship, when you're gathered together, you create the potential for God to be there. And he made you different for a reason. For a reason. Because differences, people that are different can do amazing things. And I just had this example here. Bear, bear with me, all right? Uh, I'm gonna, it's kind of heavy, but I'm, I'm gonna carry this up here. I got here a car battery, all right? This car battery. And this, this battery, you, you look at this, okay? And, and you know, jumper cables, you know how it works. You got a positive and you got a negative. And I grabbed the other end of these jumper cables right here. This is negative, negative. What happens when it's same, same? I touch this all day long, nothing happens. Why? It's the same. It's the same. And some of you, you're looking at your spouse, I wish you were more like me. I wish you were more like, I wish you were, you, you want them to be just like you. You want same, same. Again, you, you fell in love because you were different, but now you want same, same. But opposites attract. Why? Because something happens. You see, when, when you take that, what's opposite, and now I have two opposite things. Look what happens. There's a spark. There's a spark. It comes alive. Why? Not because they're the same, but because they're different. Because you're different, something can begin 
to happen. Now I'm going to put this back down. The very reason that you are different from each other gives you the potential to do something great. And I think that intimacy is the spark that some of you have been missing in your life. Intimacy, it's been that spark, it's been missing. There's other things that have taken the place. And what we view at times as weakness is actually strength if we work through our differences. But rather than work through our differences, we let them create distance and we don't experience intimacy with each other. And But here's the thing, the need doesn't go away. It's still there, but now it's met through other needs. And you can downplay, you can downplay it. When it comes to pornography, when it comes to the porn delusion, you can downplay it. So ah, it's not, I'm not addicted. Ah, it's just for fun. I've done this from when I was a kid, but the reality is your brain is being reshaped and it's changed because of this. And rather than blessing and multiplication in your relationship, you're bringing division to it. Men and women, they get addicted to this stuff. And if the devil can keep you away from intimacy, he can keep you away from increase. He stops intimacy, he stops multiplication, he stops growth, and he stops potential. Adam and Eve, they were intimated with God. Sin came into the picture. It broke that intimacy. From knowing God, now they were hiding from God. When sin came, they hid. And sin is anything that separates us from the presence of God and ultimately from the relationships that matter in life. Sin destroys intimacy. So as we close today, let me give you three things. Three things. You want to become intimate again in your relationship, in your marriage, your friendships, what, whatever it is. You don't want to let the porn delusion, you don't want to get stuck on that. Come on, it, it, it's a real problem. Over 40 billion visits on that one site alone. It's a real problem in and outside of the church. Number one, you got to take off the mask. We're living in this day and age where everyone have, has masks on. Well, what a great picture. You know, Proverbs 28, 13 says, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. There's been people that I've known for years that I go in the store, I can't even recognize them because they got a mask on. That mask makes them live. And some of you are in your marriage and your spouse doesn't even know who you are anymore because you got a mask on. It's fake. Your friends don't know who you are. You got a mask on. It isn't real. We got to take off the mask. We, we got to get, get real again. Stop being somebody you're not. If you got a problem, take off the mask. You're never going to get help if you got the mask on. Psalms 51.17 says the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Oh God, take off the mask. See, the broken and contrite heart, you know that it actually attracts God, not perfection. But just taking off the mask, saying, God, this, this is who I am. Talking to people, this is who I am. You got to take off the mask. And then number two, you just got to be honest. It's painful to be honest. Painful. But James 5.16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person is great power and produces wonderful results. We go to God for forgiveness, but we go to each other for healing. And I want to tell you today, if your spouse opens up don't, and, and makes them vulnerable, don't take shots at them. They're not opening up so you can criticize them. They may never open up again. Use it as an opportunity to get help. Be honest. Find somebody that you can trust. Find a more spiritually mature couple that you can trust. Go to them, talk to them, begin to learn from them so that you can navigate this. Proverbs 27, 6, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. And here's the third thing. After you're honest, you just got to be intentional. Intentional. Psalms 101, 3, I ref will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. Psalms 119.37, turn my eyes from worthless things. Give me life through your word. Job 31.1, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. You got to be intentional. You got to make up your mind that you're going to do what you need to do to redirect your life. 
if pornography has been a problem, make up your mind. And you know what happens when you fall? You say, what, what if I fall? Get back up. Get back up. Have some, let somebody know. Have them pray with you. Get back up and keep trying. Don't give up. Some of you, you need to give access to your phone and your computer to your, to your spouse. Let them put safeguards on it. Let them put the blocks on it. Um, some of you, get rid of your phone. It's better, it's better to have a flip phone, flip phone and save your marriage. You, you don't need the latest iPhone. Get rid of that computer. If it's a problem, be intentional. I'd say, I mean, even if it means getting rid of your internet. Huh? What? How? Come on. I'd rather get rid of the internet and save my soul, save my family. There are more important things. We got to be intentional. Overall, Hebrews 13 forces give honor to marriage, remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Honor your marriages. Bring intimacy back in your marriage. Don't fall for the porn delusion. Porn will never meet the need that God has placed in your life. Stop running after that. It's going to be a thing that will never satisfy you. Intimacy comes when we connect with people, when we connect with God. Don't be deceived. Surrender your life to the Lord. Close your eyes with me today. Lord, I pray. I pray today, God, because I know there are people watching this that struggle. They struggle with this, the, the porn addiction. It's, it's real. It's real. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I'm not here to judge anyone. I know it's real. And God, I, I just pray for the strength for them today, God, that their faith will, will rise. God, that they'll know that there's hope to, to get out of this. That for marriages and relationships where maybe a husband and wife have been going after this for intimacy, that God, you can, you can bring it back to their relationship if they surrender to you. Lord, give them the courage to talk to somebody they trust. Give them the courage to find a... a a guy to find a guy, a woman to find a woman that can begin to speak into their life and help them begin to navigate, to navigate this situation in Jesus' name. Guys, the first thing we need to do in being free is ask Jesus in our heart. I believe today that Christ is that first step. There's freedom that can be found. It's not that our life just becomes perfect in an instant. But here's the thing, our standing with God becomes perfect. His grace and His mercy that can fill your heart. And today, if you never ask Jesus into your heart, say this prayer with me right where you are. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus into my heart. I believe Jesus died for me. I also believe that He rose from the dead. He's alive in me today. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleansing me. In Jesus' name, amen. You say, is that all it took? Yeah, Jesus did the hard part. Now, it's your time to start living for him. You are forgiven. You are a new creation. Begin to act like it. Begin to act like it. Do me a huge favor. Go to arise.church. Click on the connect link. Fill out that form. Someone from our church would love to get in touch with you. Just check that box. I gave my life to the Lord. Maybe just check in that box. It's my first time here. Thanks for being with us today but I want to encourage you to do that. Again, find help if you need help. If you're married and you know that intimacy is a problem, find help if you need help. We here at the church are here to help you, to pray with you, to do all that we can to walk you through whatever situation that you're in. Thanks again for joining us today. Remember, click the share button, follow our page. We appreciate that. And if you'd love to partner with us financially, you can go to arise.church, click on the give link. It's safe and secure. We thank you for your support. Again, have a great week and look forward for you being back here at Arise Church online next weekend. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.